I'm Dr. Sridhar. Welcome to my channel. Many of you had asked a question about the new meta-analysis on PTA management, which uh, potentially shows harm if we manage actively compared to expect expected management. So I've linked the abstract here and also I'll be projecting some of the results of the study. So it's basically a meta-analysis looking at the recent studies from 2010 onwards, uh, which have compared expected management of PDA with medical management. And it so happens that among the 10 studies that fulfill their criteria for the meta-analysis, six of them used ibuprofen only, and uh, three of them had uh, a combination of ibuprofen, indomethacin or paracetamol, and one of them used indomethacin, which most of us don't use currently. So in terms of uh, applicability of the result to a wider approach, like uh, say, for example, the Iowa approach, where paracetamol is used after the early screening and subsequently you have the uh, other uh, medications, uh, brufen, uh, as an alternative option, uh, then it doesn't fit that comparison because they don't look at studies uh, including mainly paracetamol as a first-line treatment. We know that uh, Dr. Samir Gupta's study, uh, as well as uh, the Benedict study, both looked at use of ibuprofen mainly, uh, early uh, uh, screening and use in the extreme low birth weight babies. Both of them were negative studies and we had uh, results which were uh, not consistent with the use of ibuprofen in that age group. So obviously ibuprofen in the first few days of life could have side effects which could affect the outcome. So that part we can derive from these two large studies and 60% of the weight of this meta-analysis is from these two studies. So obviously the impact of these two studies is going to outweigh any other study that might have shown a potential benefit. So you have the forest plot as well and you can see that uh, nearly half of the studies did not show any positive benefit of this medication treatment compared to expected management. Regarding the possible harm. I mean, that's harder to interpret. I mean, because uh, in clinical practice, we do treat PDA and we don't see a negative outcome, even if the PDA closes or doesn't close. So mortality increase or BPD increase could have other reasons according to the unit. Each unit has different uh, styles of uh, management and so on. So. Uh, in my opinion, this meta-analysis will not change anything because essentially it's an extrapolation of uh, what was already known from the Benedict study and uh, Dr. Samir Gupta study on PDA. And uh, we need to be cautious in the first week to use ibuprofen. So that goes more in favor of what uh, Iowa group is doing. So we still need to look at the data that they are going to be providing us because they have a large uh, cohort of small babies. And we can safely say that the babies about 28 weeks probably do not need treatment in majority of the cases. So think carefully before you start any treatment for PDA in the bigger babies. In India, for example, most of you would be managing mainly the 28 weeks and above except the uh, bigger level 3 units. So try to avoid PDA management just on the basis of a murmur or anything. Do proper eco-evaluation, think carefully whether it will benefit the baby or not before you treat. And in terms of uh, the smaller babies, uh, probably the Iowa approach, uh, Dr. Patrick McNamara is a big uh, expert on this and we have to wait for the results of their uh, data as well. Uh, one side comment on this, I mean obviously many uh, colleagues, many academics are bringing out more and more meta-analysis on existing research. So the same uh, research the study results are used in different ways and they have a different spin in when they do the meta-analysis looking at certain criteria so are we really gaining from such meta-analysis so we know that evidence-based medicine is here to stay and meta-analysis or systematic reviews are obviously going to stay as well but repeating the same topic with the same studies in slightly different ways it may give publication to the authors but it may end up confusing the colleagues the junior colleagues especially because they come out uh, to see a publication in the NEJM as in this case which is a, a reputed journal the study itself the systematic review or meta-analysis is conducted very nicely but the the title or the abstract and the results are going to be confusing to the colleagues who are going to manage the patient on the ground the same applies to the oxygen in the delivery room meta-analysis so before the torpedo 2 results were available this was published and uh, that seemed to suggest that going to 90 to 100 percent oxygen in the extreme low birth weight babies may be more beneficial Again, many people, uh, I mean, started getting confused by these results. So should we really project that was also from Australia, from a reputed unit and uh, a lot of weight goes into uh, studies coming from that. But meta-analysis is really not a new study. It's just synthesizing the available information in a different way. So for the academics who need to meet a certain number of paper publications, probably a systematic review is going to be easier. But the uh, journals should always uh, look at publishing the right ones, which is going to change the message. And uh, it's easier said than done because you, they look at the structure of the study and so on, rather than the uh, actual message that is coming out and whether it's applicable to the whole population. So uh, it's a challenge and it uh, is a request to all the academics who are going to do meta-analysis or systematic reviews, focus on areas which don't have, don't repeat uh, the same. And uh, there was a recent uh, meta-analysis on butosonide with surfactant and there was the PLUS study just published which was not included in that as well. So we do have the time lag for when we do the study or the meta-analysis compared to the newer studies coming in. So you don't want to stop the publication just because you got another study. But you know what, major studies are in the pipeline. So you can plan the meta-analysis according to that. Same with the Torpedo 2, Raya 
results. I think the preliminary results were published uh, or discussed in the PA's uh, conference recently as well. So these are things to, uh, I mean, look into. And uh, from the PDA meta-analysis point of view, uh, my suggestion: stick with the basic approach that I've discussed here, as well as in the earlier uh, short video I had made on PDA management. And I hope uh, this helps. Thank you.